there has been a surge in tech layoffs and a lot of these news are making us think like oh software engineer or coding in general is coming to an end first let's look at the data based on layoffs.fii we can clearly see so far this year there has been almost 50k tech people who were impacted by the layoffs and of course not all the layoffs are also captured on this website but overall it is a pretty accurate data point of course not all of them are software engineers but majority are in this tech area it kind of provides us a very good indicator of how the tech economy is doing so what does this mean i also did another research because you kind of have to look at both sides of the picture you can't just purely look at the layouts and be like oh we are doomed but what can we make sense of these data? Some of the data points I find very useful is a level.fii. So I took a look at people who recently posted their salary and people who are posting jobs. So what did I learn from it? Based on level.fii, you can create your own filter and I'm only focusing on the past 60 days. So pretty much what has happened this year so far. Some interesting observation I have found is that we can see there are 55,000 jobs that's looking for some sort of software engineering role. So that's kind of relieving, like, oh yeah, sure, there's a lot of layoffs, but there's also a lot of companies that are still hiring aggressively, not considering people who already recently got a new job offer. Of course, many of these job postings are also not really as accurate as it could be, like people may not close it after they fill up the role, or people just open a job because they have to in order for someone internally to transfer to a new role. So a lot of time it can create this like, you know, sense of, oh, there might be too many jobs. I found the data to become very interesting once I start playing around with it. For example, why try to filter it by level, I can clearly see majority of the company out of the 55,000, 35,000 of them are looking for senior level software engineers. And if you toggle anything other than entry level and internship, the number become 40,000. That means about 73% of all the available job openings are looking for senior and above. This can be concerning for a lot of people who are studying software engineering right now, or people who are looking into getting a software engineering job. This clearly shows the number of entry level jobs are really shrinking. Because when I focus only on entry level jobs, there are only 7,000 jobs. As we know, computer science is becoming a very popular major. There's probably more than 100,000 students graduating every single year. And uh, at a given time, of course, students are all graduating around the summertime, but at a given time, there are only 7,000 available entry level jobs. That just shows how the market is definitely getting very, very competitive for this entry level world. So based on these data, what worked for me in college, getting me to that software engineering job, may no longer work anymore. What do I mean? So in college, I focus a lot on my grades. I focus a lot on getting opportunities such as teaching assistance, which I believe can help me land whatever job I need in the future because you know companies care about relevant experiences. While relevant experiences are still useful, but what I think is way more important nowadays is to get that first internship and have it transition, translate into that full-time role. Because nowadays, most cases, what happens is people who have an internship, they go for that return offer. They go straight into the company after graduation. So the company will no longer try to hire as many entry level. Now they can just backfill the role via internship programs. And I do think this will definitely be something we see way more often moving forward. Especially at these bigger tech companies, a lot of them, they are not hiring very aggressively right now. And many of them are still looking for internships. And why would they not want to, you know, if they have an internship, they already trained you. You already familiarize yourself with the internal tools, what type of work environment it is. Like, it saves them a lot of money. I can totally see how a lot of company will focus majority of their entry level hire via the internship funnel. And another observation I have made is if I go into the salary category where people enter and share their salary, the website kind of encourages you to post your own data before you can view anything. And the posting data, sometimes you might not also post the exact date 
but so it may not be as accurate. But the similar type of observation can also be found. Of course, entry level is such a smaller percentage versus senior and above, because once you become a software engineer, pretty much you fall into the category of senior and above after you work two plus years. So of course, the number of entry level by default is a smaller piece of pie, but once again, the data here shows entry level jobs is a smaller percentage of the overall hire in the past year. So this is definitely concerning for people who are in school. So I do believe, yeah, we have a lot of software engineer or a lot of people who are capable of doing software engineering related works, but we still are looking for people who are more senior, who are more experienced, because those are the ones that's harder or last in line to be replaced by any of these generative AI technologies. Whereas entry level roles, it would rather train you in-house, meaning they get you from internship or whatsoever and spend the money and time in training you and then grow you into their own senior level. So these are some sort of observation that I have found. So would I still recommend people who are looking for a job via bootcamp or any alternatives rather than going to school? Now seems to be a lot trickier and harder. You kind of have to know some sort of connection or find or somehow build to qualify for a more senior level role. Of course, now if you're looking for an entry level role, the competition might be a lot more steep. But what we do know for a fact, at least for now, is that the overall salary trajectory hasn't taken a huge hit at these bigger tech companies or overall tech. Salaries aren't being reduced significantly yet. So this overall still signals that, hey, software engineers are still desirable, but we only want people who have experiences, which makes the field harder to get into. And I guess Overall, it kind of benefits people like myself who have been in this field, but it definitely hurts people who are trying to get into the field. It's not going to be as easy to break into. It's kind of like now you have to apply to a university and you have to have all these checkbox before you can get into the special programs. Good SAT score, good GPA, etc., etc. Whereas where it translates to, oh, do you have past internship? Do you have number of years of work experiences? If so, then yeah, I guess there are still a bunch of opportunities available for you. So I think the recommendation here, I will say is, yeah, if you're thinking about breaking into tech, you really have to reevaluate, like, is this risk worth what you are looking for? Are you doing it because you think it's a lucrative field? Because sure, right now it's still lucrative, but definitely a lot harder for people to get into just for that lucrative pay. So definitely reevaluate. But if you're in school, now I would say it's more important than ever to find some sort of internship that will offer return offer and translate that into your primary entry level job. And you can always switch after that. So yeah, I hope this video was informative and uh, let me know if you have any questions. Feel free to leave a comment. And thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe.